evening, everyone. Welcome to um, how you do. Babe Civilian Police Accountability mm -hmm. Council. Um, my name is Dwayne. This is Adrian. How are you? We're with the Alliance, and we're here to talk about CPAC. What is CPAC? Civilian Police Accountability Council. It's an ordinance that we're trying to get passed so that we, the civilians, can govern the police department. Because as we've seen, the police is, you know, it's, it's like every day it's, it's, it's another crime that they've committed. And usually it's a person of color, particularly an African-American person. So we're here every Tuesday trying to get the word out about CPAC, Civilian Police Accountability Council. And we have tables set up pretty much all over the city. We're trying to get more, but currently we're at 79th and Cottage Grove, 63rd and Cottage Grove, 53rd and Harper, 111th and Michigan, 63rd and King Drive, 87th and Day and Ryan. We're in Logan Square. We need more tables, more volunteers, people to get out and do something about, <clears throat> excuse me, do something about police crimes, police brutality, just recently, a few days ago in Milwaukee, a young man was murdered. And, you know, I think, I think it's, it's like every week, it's, it's a new case, it's a new state, but it's the same scenario. An, Af an African-American person being murdered by the police department. And I'm sure that you're tired of hearing about it. I mean, we all are. So, so the question is, what are we doing about it, and what does CPAC plan to do about our problems with um, policing our communities? Because it's more than just an issue with the police, and it's more than just the issue within the community. Um, yeah, so you put those two together. But what is CPAC doing? So CPAC, the Civilian Police Accountability Council, aims to create a caucus of community members within each ward um, that basically overviews the wrongdoings of the police. So they would only need to interfere when the police have overstepped their boundaries of protecting and serving their community. It kind of serves, um, I wouldn't say like as noble, but it does serve as the conscience of the police department, seeing as they are currently lacking one. Um, and yeah, it'll be something that the communities can have to interact with the police in a peaceful manner, peaceful, organized manner, such as CAPS, which was killed off by the newsprint January of 2015. Um, not saying that it's an updated version of CAPS or Noble, Honestly, CPAC is something in its own, is something that has never been done before, never been seen in any community, which is why it's so pertinent that we implement this as soon as possible, especially since there are um, like shadow organizations such as Fair Cops and Citizens Monitor that are parading around to be, to, to, that are parading around to say as if they take on the role of CPAC and they do not. They are funded by the mayor, governed by the same ones who were in charge of IPRA, and they will not do anything for the communities, such as the, what they've been doing for the past 10 years. Um, so CPAC, Which is not much. Right. So CPAC is something new, um, and this is a basic overview of what it plans to do, who it plans to... Um, take away the power from and move all of that power back into our communities so that we won't feel as helpless when a tragedy such as, um, who was the recent, most recent to be murdered? Well, there was a young man in Milwaukee that was recently murdered. Yeah, so we won't and have to feel the pain like those in um, Milwaukee. We have a caller? You're in the air, caller. Uh, yes, I wanted to make a, a point, if I might, and, and I certainly would applaud you with regard to the, the cause for which you are advocating. 
And there are a great many examples out there uh, of police brutality, of, of police, quite frankly, murdering innocent in individuals. At the same time, we need to be careful about not lumping everything together. The situation in terms of what happened in Milwaukee as of right now, we have coroner's data that shows that this was an individual shot in the front, not while running away in the back. We have uh, the claim on the part of the police department that there's demonstrative video that he did have a gun in his hand. This is not the Freddie Gray case. This is not a number of other cases where demonstrably the police have engaged in wrongful behavior. I'm sorry, but not every time the police uh, end up shooting someone is that a, a wrongful deed. There are times when people bring that upon themselves through their actions. If you point a gun at a police officer and then you end up dead as a result of police shooting you, that is something that is your fault. That is not an example of police murdering you. And I'm glad that you actually did clear that up because, um, no, we're not trying to defend anyone who's out here attempting to murder someone um, that has any ill intentions toward anyone. Um, I'm just speaking on the 728 killings that have happened this year so far and the 1,200 and seven killings that happened last year by the police, the last one of which uh, the person who was shot and killed was mistaken for having a gun when he had a cell phone in his right hand. So it's... Um, right, and that's, and, and, that, and that's why I'm, a, I'm applauding you with regard to exactly what you're talking about. In, in those cases where we can demonstratively demonstrate a wrongdoing, we certainly need to uh, address that. At the same time, uh, we need to recognize that, for instance, what's happening in Milwaukee, uh, that does lead me and a great many other people uh, somewhat bewildered in that uh, I, I don't understand, given the evidence so far, as to exactly why people are protesting, given that there's no evidence that this individual was wrongfully killed. Uh, the, uh, as a matter of fact, the evidence is piling up that he, in fact, bought this upon himself. Uh, again, unless, unless the police uh, are lying, that the videotape doesn't show what they claim it shows, that the coroner's report is wrong, I mean, all of this would have to be a lie, in which case I think certainly there should be outrage. But as of right now, I don't understand the, the, the notion of outrage in that regard. There should be outrage in terms of other cases, and that, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, one person wrongfully uh, killed by the police is one too many, and we certainly should raise those issues. We should raise those issues, and we should take political actions, such as contacting your aldermen, such as moving throughout your community and being that positive voice and that informative voice, letting everyone know that there is something being done, and it's called CPAC, and we need it to be passed. Before the end of this year, before the mayor decides, hey, I'm going to pass like any legislation I want because I'm the mayor, that will not help our communities. So thank you, sir, so much. Um, yeah. for clearing that up for our yeah, viewers. We, we appreciate and applaud all of your calls, your concerns. I mean, that's what we're here for. And I believe we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. We're And I believe we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, yes, hi, this is Dr. Wilson. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, how are you? Uh, yes, hi, this is Dr. Wilson. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, how are you? Okay, we're having a Great. little difficulty. I have a you? question for um, okay, well, Adrian now. and just the panel in general. Okay. Um, what are you guys doing to promote this um, this effort in the community? I think is great, and I just think you need to come out more, maybe into the schools, into the churches, um, community health fairs that are in the in the city. A lot of school back to school programs are taking place now, and so you, you have the large numbers that you could reach if you were to maybe come out and make yourself and your presence known. Um, I'm just finding out about this, and um, it is quite interesting. And I want to applaud Ms. Adrian for her efforts in the community, and um, she's volunteering her time um, to try to make a difference. And I think it's a wonderful thing. Yes. Yes. Um, well, uh, thank you, Kevin, for your question. And a couple of things that we are doing, we are just now coming together with other organizations throughout the community, such as CARE, such as the U.S. Palestinian Network, um, and several other um, several other community social organizations that I really can't just roll off the tip of my tongue right now. But um, we are involved in uh, their efforts as well so we show up to their events and um that's our 
spaces of networking at the current moment. All of your input is greatly appreciated and I will be taking it back to the organization to see how we can implement these to get CPAC passed much sooner. Man, um, we need we need everybody. I mean, it's not just, you know, us. We need, this is like a community thing where everybody needs to get out and push and do something and let their voice be heard. Now, it's just a voice. If they hear you say it once. Right. <laughs> just to give you an update, tonight at Westinghouse College Prep, 3223 West Franklin, there is a public hearing. As a matter of fact, it's going on tonight at 630. So if you can get there, that would be really good, okay? Because we need to let the mayor know, we need to let him know that, you know, we need a civilian police accountability Council because the current infra is not working. So something needs to be done. That's why we're on the streets. We're protesting. We're marching. We're doing something. We have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. The gentleman in front of me that talked to you is 100% right. The people, but still, the people are in the streets. Burning, burning stuff up. Now, one of the young ladies in the crowd said, don't. Don't, don't burn our stuff. Go to the suburbs and burn their stuff. Anybody that's white in this crowd, get to behind us. Now, that can't be right. And you know that, sir. But you know what? I, frustration is something. It makes you do things, you know, that, that, that aren't right. right. But still... You still have to, please, got to tell the people out there, wait, wait, wait until all, everything's in. Then, if you need to go, but don't march, you know, uh, and, and uh, burn stuff down if you, if you don't know what's going on. And marches don't, don't help anyway. Look at all the marches we go here in Chicago when, when, some, when uh, you have a bad weekend, right? It doesn't do any good. They march in the afternoon. All, all the stuff that's happening is in, at night, two in the morning. So that's crazy to much for that. Thank you uh, very much. Thanks for your call. Thank you for your input, sir. And um, I would like to uh, draw his point and one of the callers from earlier together. When one of the callers from earlier brought up that um, when we march and the person actually did something wrong, but I will hold my point because yeah, we have another know. caller, so just wait for me to get back into that. Caller, you're on the air. Caller, are you there? I guess not. I don't know, maybe there's a little difficulty. Hello? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. I can barely hear you. Okay. How are you? Can you hear us now? Put some bass in it. Yeah, I hear you a little better. Okay. And what's your question, sir? Or your comment? Well, I, I just turned to the program. Okay. And I just want to add, add something on to what they're saying. Sure. And uh, that's about it. I didn't really quite hear the uh, the addresses they want they, that they're going to be grouping up at. Okay, so you would like to hear the address? That's at Westinghouse College Prep. It's 3223 West Franklin. And that's tonight at 6 Oh, that's today? Yes, that's tonight. It's going on right now. So if you can, uh, if you can get over there right now. Uh, if you can't, I can't do don't that. Feel I'm me. packing up. Were they going to have it again somewhere? There are, always, like, uh, in, there are always public hearings that are taking place throughout Chicago. They may sound boring, but I promise you they're very interesting. And um, we'll be having information on their locations and whatnot each and every week here at 630. And, um, yeah, I believe he has a couple of more that he knows about that are coming up. So if you know anyone who is interested in obtaining this kind of information, feel free to let them know. Yeah. It's all about sharing knowledge. So Absolutely. go ahead, spit them. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I just started watching really can TV. You know, I found it really interesting. You know, okay. there's, there's the Farrakhan and a lot of others, you know. It's, true. 
there's a lot of good uh, programming that we have, a lot of informational things that we need to share with people. And what we're trying to do is to get this ordinance passed through the city so that oh, we, the pop, people, right? the civilians, the civilians can basically police the police department by having an elected official, okay? And not someone that's appointed by the mayor. So that's right, basically right. why we're here tonight and why we're here every Tuesday night at 6.30 to, to let... Oh, you guys there yes. every night? Every, Every Tuesday, Tuesday night from 6.30 to 7 p.m., we are here informing the community of how we can get active politically, socially, well, communally. Um, well, that's not it. That's at Westinghouse or that at Can TV? No. No. Westinghouse, no. That's uh, it's a college preparatory. So you can have to wear it every Tuesday. No, we're we're gonna be here every Tuesday. We're gonna be on air every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Oh, but okay, every okay. Monday All right. every Monday evening from six PM to eight PM there is um a general hall meeting for CPAC, which is held at thirty 1325. 1325 South, South Wabash. So um if you Give know me an ink pen something. Hold on one minute, let me get an ink pen. All right. Um Okay, so, that's... Be proactive like our callers here. Go ahead, Absolutely. give us a call in. I love Hit us it. with any I love questions. It. I love it. We got the information. At least we'll try and get it for you. Better okay, what's the address? That's 1325 South Wabash. And that's on Mondays at 6 p.m. 1325. Uh, South Wabash? Yes, sir. Okay. So come down and join our meeting. Let your voice be heard. See how you can help us and join us. And, you know, this is for a good cause. We're trying to get CPAC passed. Currently, we're over, we have over 40,000 signatures and we're still counting. So we're okay. almost halfway there. Our goal is what, 100,000? The goal is 100,000, but the reality of it is we need those in each ward informed about the bogus politics going on in their city, what is being right, done with right. their money. We need them to know that CPAC is one of the answers to one of the solutions, one of the largest solutions in our time today. Um, and. Yeah, that that's the that's the basis of it all. We're we're counting we're counting the signatures because we need that. But really, if everyone knows and everyone tells their alderman and applies that aldermanic pressure to the mayor, we can see some real change in a matter of time. Absolutely, it just Absolutely. takes a little bit of time. Absolutely, I mean it, it's so. Let me get this address: thirteen twenty-five South Wabash. Yes, yes. sir. And that's every Monday? Every Monday. Yep, every at Monday from here at 6. 6? Yes, 6 p.m., sir. Yes. All right, let's see if I can make it. Okay. Well, we appreciate All you. All right, yes, thank you. you. Okay, you All have right, a great have night. have an awesome night. And, um... You too. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, sir. And um, so th those hosting the general hall meetings on Mondays, they also host um, different public hearings that can happen on a Thursday, a Saturday, um, a Wednesday afternoon. So just always be prepared to take down an address because that's awesome. Absolutely. Um, that's being proactive. Abs absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we are definitely just trying to, you know, let our voice be heard. Uh, get people involved. That's why we're doing the show every Tuesday at 6.30. So come, come with your calls, your comments, your concerns. I mean, police brutality, police crimes, they have to stop. It's like every week there's a new case, maybe a new city, but it's pretty much the same scenario. And it needs to stop because black lives do matter. And, you know, People are hurting. I mean, what about the families of these people? You know, the they have no, you know, no voice. So, you know, we're just trying to be a voice. We want you to be a voice. 
and, and, and let our voice be heard because there's success in numbers and we're trying to get this these petitions signed so that we can take them to the mayor and let them know that we have the support of the community that we need to have a civilian police accountability council that's what CPAC stands for uh, you see it on my shirt um, if you see see it on the streets you'll see know it it's face. CPAC you know I look like CPAC <laughs> all right so it, it's something that Adrian and I are definitely passionate about and but we're just two people out of the thousands of people that you know know about this Jeez. and just trying to get more Jeez, people in the hundreds and, of thousands yeah just trying to get more people involved oh I mean we need your signatures we're at 53rd and Harper, 63rd and Cottage Grove, 79th and Cottage Grove. Come down, sign a petition. You can go online, you can sign a petition. You know, let's let the mayor know that we, the people, we want to have a civilian police accountability council where we basically govern the police when when basically the police does something wrong. I mean, if, if they don't do anything wrong, then, you know, there would be no need. But if you look at what's going on, and it's it's hard not to see what's going on, it's, it's, it's just clearly wrong. I mean, it doesn't matter what color the person is, wrong is wrong, but it just happens to be mostly African-American people who are being murdered by the police department and a lot of cases, I know we had a caller said that, you know, sometimes, you know, more or less the person is doing something wrong or what have yeah, you. Yeah, I wanted to that's, expound that's, on that's that. That's true, but I there's actually, been a lot of cases, We, you know, it's 12, been a lot of cases 12, where... 12, not 12,000, 1,207. A lot of cases where from this year. the person was unarmed and, you know... Um, yeah, and things that's, went that's left. Just, that's just upsetting to they me. They really did feel left. Um, so I just wanted to expound on a couple of things. Well, one thing, first thing I wanted to do before I forget is to challenge the viewers and all of those who have called in. If police crime said, like, that isn't your sole issue with everything that's wrong with Chicago. I challenge you to take, just put the timer on your phone, take two minutes out of your day to think about how you can make an actual change in the largest issue you find in Chicago. Because I promise the solution is much closer than you think. Um, for me, it was a train ride away to this organization. So mm -hmm. uh, it, sometimes it can be that simple. Sometimes it can be a simple call. So just take two minutes out of your day to think about how you can make an actual change because it's never too late to continue considering how I can better my environment, how I can better this for my children, how I can better this for all those around me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, to talk about how um, sometimes the person can be in the wrong, sometimes um, marching isn't the best answer, especially when you see that these marches are being hailed in vain, that these marches um, don't lead to anything positive. There are people looting and burning things down. Um, yeah, I... Honestly, forgot my point on that. But I honestly okay. believe, yeah, because that was a bit from earlier. So mm. I did forget the point that I was trying to bring up. I'm so sorry. Um, what am I trying to wrap up here from that? Well, we've got, uh, wanted to mention the Bob Billiken Day Parade. Yeah, we're going to get to week. that. We're going to get to that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I really did forget my point because that was about... 10 minutes ago but I will try my best to improve on myself see that's two minutes I could take out of my day right there <laughs> improving the world um so the Bud Billiken Parade was a success was a success we got we obtained many signatures at our table we unfortunately we were not allowed to march in the Bud Billiken Parade mm -hmm. although we have been for the past three years because the police were able to keep their float in the parade. And for some reason, I guess, the facilitators thought the tensions were too high to include mm -hmm. a float on police reform, um, even though there is a police accountability task force and the police float, uh, for whatever reason. 
So we were banned from the parade this year and they set up a table on the side. They had their concert there on the side, everything at the end of the parade. And it was honestly amazing. So the presence was there, the people were there, and they they wanted CPAC. They mostly all wanted CPAC. Everyone I spoke to wanted CPAC. But, um, and before we wrap up, I guess, what did we want to bring up before we wrapped up? I want to say be careful of how the media reports certain things. That is one of my closing points because uh, one thing that's going around is that there are like three different gang groups that are trying to um, come together to push up against the Chicago Police Department. Now, um... I believe that in times like this, these kinds of stories are pushed through to the media to keep this kind of static-like um, tension between the people and the law enforcement. So do I believe the three gangs could possibly conspiring to go against the police department? Maybe. Then again, what chances would they have? Probably none, if you think about it realistically. Also, in one of the stories that I actually looked up, but it went away because sometimes the internet, it just trips out. One of the stories reported that the city council's 50 to zero approval on Wednesdays of Eddie Johnson's new appointment as police superintendent there was no 50 to 0 approval. The Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of the city of Chicago, decided to take it upon himself to move an entire city code to get this man his seat. He pulled him into his office, specifically Eddie Johnson, and told him, I want you to have this job. Not only is that illegal, that was not pushed through to the media. No, that there has been no mass outrage on that. I believe there should be marches held for it things in, of that nature. Absolutely. Um, but, so yeah, just be careful what you read and what you take in when you're figuring out what kind of change you can make because that all influences your decision. Do your research, people. And um, yeah, that's, that's me right now. Anything else to do? Well, let's get out there and sign those petitions so we can take all these petitions we have to the mayor and let him know that we need a civilian police accountability council. That's now, what CPAC actually, stands for. So before we close, why don't you think they they want to allow the people to elect the police Be decision makers? Because they want to keep the control. Up. They want to keep the control. Control and power. As it stands okay. now, they're out of control. I mean, that's pretty much mm -hmm. what it is. They're basically out of control. And they want to keep the control, and we're trying to do something about it because it's our kids who are being murdered by the police. I believe it's because they know they're going to lose their desk duty, which means they won't get paid for about three months until the investigation is complete. But that is what we're asking for. If you shoot and kill someone's son, no, you can't get paid no more. But um, now we're wrapping up. We have the one minute left on the show. And I would just like to thank all of our wonderful callers and viewers for tuning and in great tonight. Great calls, great calls tonight. Great calls, great questions. Keep them coming. Every Tuesday, we are here from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Call us. Let us know what you think in the CPAC. Let us know the steps you're taking in your community to push CPAC through because we are here because we need you. We love you. We want to share that love and all this knowledge with Chicago with Austin, with West Lawndale, with Inglewood, everywhere, every ward. Come be involved, come get involved, come to our meetings. Uh, we're here every Tuesday, 6.30 till 7. Give us a call, let us know your comments, your concerns. Let's try and make something happen.